Excuse me. Hi. Can I help you? Yes. I'll have a bottle of tequila. Please. Pretty please. What kind? Um, I'll take whatever's cheapest. Well, not the cheapest. Next to cheapest. Second cheapest. And do you have your fake ID ready? What? Fake ID? I'm 22. Born 6, 1892. Gemini. Max? It's Grace. Caroline's sister. You know this guy? Yeah, he used to date my sister. Grace! You're working here now? I thought you lived in LA. Yeah, yeah. I just moved back like a month ago. You've really grown up. <laughs> What are you, in high school now? We just graduated. Damn it. Yeah, I wasn't going to sell to you anyway. Well, how have you been? Oh, good, good. You know, uh, buried in debt. Moved back in with my mom. Working graveyards at this place, so... Living the American dream. God, that's depressing. I'm moving to LA in August for college, so you should tell me some chill things to do. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you soon. Okay. Oh, uh, the Coke's $1.50, uh, but I can cover it. No, no, it's okay. You don't have to do that. It's funny. I was just thinking about you, like, yesterday. I was on the phone talking to Caroline. Where's she at these days? She's in Chicago. Chicago? What's she doing there? She's teaching. Holy shit. Yeah. We were talking and I was just remembering this one night out in the desert. It was Christmas break. I I was in eighth, eighth grade and somebody put on some weird electronic music and, and you started jumping into and out of the fire and screaming while well, singing, I guess, along with the music. Your sister was probably pretty pissed at me for that. She always said I drank too much. I was in awe. Really. That sounds terrifying. Well, we gotta go. Hey, try discount liquor. I never got carded there. At least not back in the day. Thanks, Max. I'm gonna come visit you. What are you going to study out there? Theater. Really? Where at? University of California, Los Angeles. UCLA? Over there in Westwood, huh? That's a yuppie hellhole. Yuppie? <laughs> yeah! You spend a lot of time over there? 
hardly never. So you just judged it from a distance, based on stereotypes and hearsay? Yeah, and the internet. I guess the same way I judge most things. So why acting? What's that about? You like playing pretend? Yeah, I guess. I like performing. Caroline used to write these plays, and when we were visiting family in Montana, we would put them on with our cousins. She'd always give me the old lady parts. I had a lot of fun with that. I acted in some high school plays. It was fun. Putting on the makeup and the costumes and reading bad dialogue. It was fun. Especially with how much money I was spending on beer and cigarettes. 
expensive habit. Yeah, they really are. Why don't you quit? Uh, eventually. It's a sufficient emotional crutch. Not efficient, but sufficient. I got a similar thing, but with bad rap music. Oh yeah. Big beats and dumb lyrics just make me happy. <laughs> Kind of reminds me of this uh, book my dad used to read uh, to me, my brother, as a bedtime story. It was about the tales of power or something like that by this guy, uh, Carlos Castaneda. And this guy, Carlos, was like a reporter from LA. One day on the bus, he meets Don Juan, this old Native American Indian guy. He quickly learns that Don Juan is like some crazy mystic. And he, uh, they proceed, he proceeds to teach uh, Carlos the ways of power. And uh, that usually involves going and hanging around campfires in the desert at night and doing peyote and throwing up and having visions and stuff. One night, they're sitting around a campfire just like this, out in the desert, just like this. Don Juan tells Carlos about this special technique for getting around the desert at night. He called it the gate of power. The way the gate of power works is uh, something like you put your hands at your side, you lift your knees real high, you just run. Basically, you just run and you can just fly through the desert at night. You won't trip and you won't run into anything and you won't get lost. But uh, one night, Don Juan just jumps up and he uh, starts pantomiming the gate of power and Carlos kind of knows what he's doing. and. Don Juan just starts running off into the desert and Carlos just jumps up and instinctively he just starts doing the gate of power too and he could hear Don Juan's footsteps but he can't see him it's pitch black in the desert and uh, it's going well Carlos is running feel the air wishing past his head until he starts thinking about it and as soon as he starts thinking I'm doing it I'm actually doing it he like crashes right into a rock or falls into a ditch or something like that. And um, that's the gate of power. I'll mind you, I was like eight years old when I first heard this, so uh, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Let's try it. Wait. Let's go. Hands at your Lift your knees up. <laughs> yeah, I, like guess, I guess that's how it looks. Okay, that's the go. image I had in my head. Ready? Ready? Go! Wait, Grace! 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 the reason for the word. What about Caroline? <laughs> Why did it end between you two? I don't know. We were very different people. I mean, we had similarities. We liked the same music and movies. We like to drink tequila and dance like idiots. But we argued a lot. About important things sometimes. And about not so important things. And that was invigorating at first. But after a while we realized we are in love with imaginary versions of each other. 
I was in love with this version of Caroline that was becoming more and more detached from who she was in real life. It was who I wanted her to be, not who she really was. It's hard, you know? Because I, I did love her, I just... It, it's hard, loving somebody. You keep going even when it's bad. Especially when it's bad. Because how much worse would it be without them? out to uh, LA. Uh, I was working in this Indian restaurant there. I took a lot of breaks with the cooks out back, you know. You worked in an Indian restaurant? Yeah, I worked at this place called um, Non Sequitur. Can I try it? The cigarette? Yeah. Go oh, on. no way. I'm not going to be responsible for that. Oh. I don't want to be your first time. Come on, just let me try it. No, Come on. Just no, one. Let me no, try Grace. it. But just <laughs> no way. No way. Max, don't no. be a hypocrite. Grace, come on. What if. I want you to be my first time.
they don't. <sighs> All right. Thanks. And could you bring some alcohol? some uh, paps, so I hope that's okay. That's perfect. I've never had it. Is, is it any good? Uh, not really. <laughs> PBR? Of course the LA Hipster brings PBR. Hey, how old are you? I'm gonna need to see some ID. Older than Grace. We want the screwdriver! And that's what my dad would tell me when I was a kid. He'd say, Max, you're funny looking you don't have many friends. <laughs> so I guess not much has changed. My dad always tells me before I go to school, or I guess used to tell me. That's right, you gotta get your tenses right soon to be college girl. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, my dad used to tell me, past perfect, study hard, get good grades, so when you... Is that? BRB. That means be right back. Yeah, okay. No, fuck your addiction. What's the plan, Max? Damn it, Savannah. What do you want from me? I want to know why my best friend has been spending our last summer together with some washed up hipster loser. I'm only 25. Well, I'm 18. friendly space? Beer drinking and gay bashing only? Real blight shit, right? You know, I think that Savannah's brother has a guitar in his bedroom. We can go on a little finding mission if you want. Wow. 
What did you do with Grace? Did you drug her and put her in the back of your car? I don't have a car. Oh, let me guess. You drive one of those old-timey bicycles with the big wheel in the front and the tiny wheel in the back. Oh, instead of a helmet, you wear a top hat. What the hell, man? Wait, I, uh, I may have slightly misjudged this situation. Slightly misjudged? I've done nothing but talk shit about you. Exactly! generation. We're the same generation. So what's the problem? I think you should leave, dude. Oh, fuck you, dude. Go back to LA, you slimy douchebag. Max! I'm... I'm sorry. Wait, so what happened? Hey, um, could I bum a cigarette off of you? You're an idiot. So I'll call you? Good luck with the artist martyr routine! Artist martyr. What? You just tried to kiss my best friend. She's an option for me. We're both stuck here in Blythe. I have no other requirements for a significant other. So that's it. Proximity above all else. I'm a pragmatist at heart. You can't be picky when you live in this town. Fuck romance. It's overrated. I like you, Max. No, I like you. Maybe. Maybe I'm just some version of my sister you wish she would have been. That's not... that's not even... I'm not my sister, Max! Hey, I know that! And we're not together. Don't. We started hanging out after the party. We're both stuck in Blythe. We're both losing our best friend. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but then again, not a lot does. Oh, they're cowboy. Slow your horses. I'll slow your horses. You're very dumb. So I've been told? Look, whatever. I could just use some help. That's what we're here for. I uh, was gonna get you something, really, but I ran out of time. 
so sorry. Thanks. Good luck out there. I love you. I'm coming to visit you, like, tomorrow. Okay, you better. Study hard, get good grades. Uh, how'd the rest go? Study hard, get good grades. When you get out of school, you get a good job. Huh, I thought it would've rhymed. You should move to Chicago, Max. You should move to LA. I don't know. Maybe.